All right, guys. Um, hope you're all doing well. Shalom to the Jews. Salam Aleichem to any Muslims who watch my videos. Probably not that many. But you got to realize that the true religion has been fragmented and there's been many pseudo religions that have been created over the thousands of years who proclaim another messiah or another prophet which replaces the true messiah and you know we can study all the literature and usually they cover their bases the writers of these books the talmud um, there is aspects where rabbis actually quote um, Yeshua in many of their sayings but they say that they are the originators of Yeshua as the originator you know in the Quran it actually says that um, you, you know Yeshua uh, is, is, is the Messiah uh, they call him Isis or where would they get this name? I believe that the name Isis or Isis, is, it just comes from an Egyptian goddess. And you got to realize Satan has really corrupted the names, even within the King James Bible. If you can't see that, then, um, well, it's, it's, it's pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious. All you, all you need to do is spend five minutes and pray about it, and the Holy Spirit will confirm it. But for those of you who, who refuse that, refuse to do that um, then you see that the whole Yeshua movement is a massive Jewish conspiracy or some utter crazy nonsense other aspects you know of the conspiracy in Judah and Israel you know the Jewish people are quite happy for Christians to think that um, Jesus or Yeshua comes from a different nation you know um, doesn't mind dressing up in red clothing and a big white beard once a year coming down a chimney you know doesn't mind um, you following false festivals and feasts and they call it Christianity certain Jews in the world that, that are okay with that but you shouldn't be as a saint be okay with that you got to realize there is a plan to subvert the truth all of the sower is one of the most important parables to learn within Christendom in fact whether you're a Christian, a Jew, or a Muslim, or a Buddhist, when you study the parable of the sower, you understand that this is God speaking, and he's speaking about some type of seed which is not of this world, which he's not speaking about a particular religion. You know, to follow Judaism, you've got to believe in physical circumcision. But if you take minus that aspect, you know, then there's loads of different schools Jewish and Christian schools that follow, try to follow the Torah and the Word of God. Um, so, you know, there's all these psyops going on, um, the psyop about the flat earth. And uh, really, what you've got to realize is, I mean, sometimes they just look at David Icke's videos. And sometimes he does, as I've, I've, I've quoted him a few times, or I've not quoted him specifically, but I've, I've mentioned him um, in some of the studies that, that I've had, but it's very clear he's not a Christian. It's very clear he rejects Yeshua as the Messiah. It's very clear that um, he thinks that we're living in some, some type of hologram or um, altered reality, which in fact maybe he knows something he knows a certain truth that many of us don't, that perhaps CERN has, you know, perhaps CERN has, has uncovered certain veils that shouldn't have been lifted. And, you know, as Christians, we realize that there is a, a spiritual realm where the, there are demons, there are fallen angels who are imprisoned and so on, uh, industry, which works hand in hand, yes, with Nazism, yes, with paganism. Yes, with um, just about every multicultural religion on the earth, except uh, the born again Christians, because they always make Christianity um, look as if it's in a bad light, except if it's Catholicism, of course, which isn't Christianity. You've got to realize that. Um, many Catholics think that they're Christians, 
But when they're really challenged, do you believe that, that Yeshua is who he says he is, the Jewish Messiah, he died for your sin? It's almost as if like they've just been thrown in the deep end and to escape, you know, and uh, they, they came up with all types of stuff so as not to enter into um, speaking of what the Bible teaches. Not so as not to say, okay, the Bible talks about uh, when, when you accept Yeshua, that you get a water baptism. This doesn't happen in the Catholic Church. You know, they baptize babies. How can a baby understand what a baptism is, what being born again is, when they're just being physically born on this earth? When, when they haven't even sinned or even considered sinning in, the, in their minds and they're being called these um they're now confirmed as catholics the only thing that we can truly be confirmed as is, is sinners and we got to realize these basic fundamentals of what the bible teaches because otherwise we get lost in all types of crazy religions which do not hold up yeshua jesus as as the jewish messiah um, and you get all kind of racist theologies, all kind of nationalistic theologies, um, which of course, I mean, the nations have been within their parameters for thousands of years. M many nations have fought against one another. You know, Scotland and England was a, was a very great rivalry in Britain. But after the Union, you know, you're, you're, you're getting English people, Scottish people, Irish people, Welsh people marrying each other and um you know mixing together you know these various various tribes celtic tribes anglo-saxon tribes and uh other nordic tribes etc etc so what you got to realize is that the parable of the sower is speaking about a seed which is not of this world you know there are a lot of racists out there that believe that you should marry within your race but what you got to understand is that the Bible defines a race not as color. The Bible really defines a race, first of all, as a culture. The culture basically speaks of the race, you know, and the Celts were the first ones to break away from the, the terrible um, problems that the Catholic Church caused and, you know, the... the uh, communist system really which it was and um, before the reformation and th they're trying to bring that back people don't really understand what's happening and uh, why you know such as the court systems and the governments and so on are just oppressing the people so badly in the UK it's very apparent in the UK it's maybe not so apparent in other countries but it seems to be very obvious within the United Kingdom and the, the, you know they're trying to shut everything down try to shut everyone's mouth just um, pay your fine, go to jail, don't speak, don't say anything, don't speak against the oppressive state that's basically stealing your possessions, stealing your money, coming into your house, taking this, taking that. You know, um, it's just normal. Don't, 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 don't even breathe a single word of, um, you know, protest. Especially don't believe in, that there's a God of justice. You know, and uh, th this is how the United Kingdom operates. If you if you type in in Google "Yes Minister" and you see "Yes Minister," you now I personally don't find that program funny at all because what they actually present is actual truths. Like for example, they say that um, they encourage um, within the Church of England. They encourage atheism to keep the agnostics in the church. And then people laugh and stuff like that. And this is like an advisor to the prime minister. And they go through all these different aspects of British society. And it's meant to be a comedy program. But when you really analyze everything that they're saying, like 90 odd percent of it is actual fact, actual truth. And the people find it so ridiculous that they're laughing. And it's meant to be a comedy program. But in fact, it's reality which is actually kicking in. And it's not funny when reality kicks in. When people realize their religious rights are taken. When people realize that the, the, the rights of owning property is being taken by the government, sub subverted. 
and all of these uh, things, you know, w w which went on in the refor before the Reformation, as I made a video about the Covenanters, and just uh, perhaps even into the hundreds of thousands, if not more, who, who were real Christians, Bible-believing Christians who were tortured and jailed and um, starved to death and their houses burnt down and you know if, if they were found in possession of a bible the catholic church would torture you and then probably imprison you kill you all kind of bad stuff um, and it just amazes me that catholics still think that somehow the catholic church represents jesus christ which his real name is yeshua the messiah it just, the mind just blows when, when you read about all the articles, all the murders, all the rapes that go on, still go on in the Catholic Church. Yet the Catholics just get on. They, they don't even bother about what's happening to their own children. They don't even protest. Um, you know, the Protestants were called Protestants because they protested against the ills and the injustices of And now what you got is a very complacent Protestant church which has forgotten how to protest, which has forgotten how to fight for its rights and freedoms. And, you know, what do you get today? You know, Brian of London, Tommy Robinson, you know, Avi from, from Australia, you know, who did a, did a really good video the other day that I saw uncovering one of the Australian journalists that all of them um, they just have a program and an agenda to um, to make it seem as if that they're against Nazism when they themselves are are the Nazis, it's like a reverse Nazism. It's some strange, weird, communist, um, Fabian socialist agenda, which many of us out there have, 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 have got, had websites about, you know, or still have websites or videos about. Um, it's pretty incredible. And I think even atheists and people who... I watch Count Dankula's videos, and I, I don't know if the guy's a believer or a Christian. He probably isn't, right? You know, he still drinks, still smokes. But even these people are contemplating that perhaps there's something supernatural happening on this earth today. That the Bible has already predicted what's happening right now. It's going to be a, a worldwide communist dictatorship under the Antichrist. This is what's forming around us. The Bible forewarned us about this 2,000 years ago. So how could Yeshua Christ, the true prophet, the true, the only true prophet, um, that everything he said has come to pass, that he's completely fulfilled the word of God and the Torah so that we can recognize him, so that we can understand that he, he, he died for our sin, that the blood that was shed on the cross redeems the black man, the yellow man, the Caucasian man, the Celtic, the Anglo-Saxon, the Jew, the fake Jew, the Ashkenazi Jew, the Sephardic Jew, every race and culture and kindred in the world can be redeemed through the supernatural resurrection power of, of the Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. And this is the good news. Compared to all the wickedness that's going on, and recently, I commended Alex Jones for actually preaching the Word of God correctly. I commend the if they've been the worst sinner uh, ever out there, and they've got a terrible record, and they've, et cetera, et cetera. They've lost their public appeal, or they've, they've lost their public uh, popularity, whatever it is. And they're getting thrown off of social media, which is actually, obviously, causing them sympathy in a lot of people's eyes. But I commend people for... Um, telling people to repent, turn to the God of the Bible, and also for doing a decent enough job, um, and as I've commended them again, for probably more exposing the so-called alien agenda. Um, he's done that, I believe he's done that pretty well to the best of his understanding. And I, and I believe that, um, you know, there's enough low-hanging fruit out there on YouTube. You don't need to be a member of any um, website you know, any paid organization, and you have to be, I suppose, if you want to keep up with the news. But, um, you know, if you want information about God or how to be saved or fellowship or you want prayer or whatever it is, 
You know, there's tons and tons of people, Christians out there that, that are, are preaching many, many truths today. I still have to work out how to do a live hangout on my channel. You know, I can obviously make a live video, but I don't know how to do a, li a live hangout on um, Google Hangouts yet on my phone, or I think I had to download some software on my laptop. I remember last year I tried to do something, but it seems really complicated. Um, so, yeah, I'd love to hang out with some of you out there um, who are going through the same things as I am. Um, you know, recognizing there are changes. It's called the Mandela effect, but really it's a quantum effect that, um, uh, you know, I believe, you know, people like David Icke, I'm not sure if he's made a video about that directly, but he does go bang on about the fact we're living in some type of um, um, reality which is appears to be physical but isn't. He, he seems to, to be quite adamant on that, but basically what I think is that the supernatural realm or the spiritual realm is that there is a higher realm. Right, I'll give you an example, okay? So if you're a fish, swimming in, in the water in the sea okay and then all of a sudden um you see this dude with legs walking through the actual water and you're going that's not a fish what is that and it appears to be breaking you know all the all the dimensions and you know it's actually walking slowly towards you and you're going that's not normal this is not natural well i think there's another realm like out there outside the three dimensions that we see um, and that can be discussed in science and um, that type of thing. Like, um, physicists talk about these things. But I think there's another realm out there that's able to cut into this one and, and possibly change things. I think things have been somehow, they've been altered, probably through CERN. And, you know, the, the key Bible verse um, in, in this all is from Daniel which says that the Antichrist shall change times and laws. Now, many Christians have thought that this verse is speaking about the change of the calendar. Well, the calendar has been changed many, many times. You know, the original calendar is a solely lunar calendar, which is described in the Book of Enoch, which is still kept today in the nation of Ethiopia, which is one of the greatest Christian nations still up on the earth, even though it's been completely almost turned over by the Muslims, but it's one of the most ancient Christian cultures in the world, and you can certainly study that culture, and you can get a lot of, um, you can you can learn a lot of Bible truths by studying that culture, and you see that the Ethiopians are black, but God doesn't see them, see us as a color, he sees us as a race if we are born again, so, so that's really my point, a lot of people just can't can't understand what a Judaizer is and what, what this is or that, I understand it. But there are some nations out there that v hold very, very close to the actual commandments of God. There's very there's, there's some nations who have tried, you know, the Celts were actually successful to begin with. And then when the British Union came in, it was forced because um, when certain Celts were doing trade in Europe, they were being robbed and there were uh, a lot of their trade and their finances were being ruined and so you know due to this there had to be a union with England so they could get some type of protection and trade with 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 Europe and that you know Scotland could prosper as a nation because you have to have free trade to prosper and obviously the Scottish Parliament is really does want to be part of the EU um, um, but but the, the 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 reverse side of that is the religious aspect and obviously the fact that Britain have been through two world wars and fought against a Nazi uh, regime, um, which is more than nationalism. Nazism is more than nationalism. It's just a German word. Nazis are nationalists. But see, the Nazis were more than nationalists. They did a practice occultism. They did worship um, um, false idols and deities. They think they were almost exclusively Roman Catholics. You can challenge that if you want. All you need to do is read read about Hitler's um, Hitler's actual origins and the fact that you know his mother was a was a 
cleaner at one of the Rothschild houses and then lo and behold she was pregnant um, after staying a short time in one of these Rothschild mansions and so it's said it's very much speculated that Adolf Hitler was half Jew, half German. He was financed possibly, as Sean Ross talks about, the uh, Knights Templar. And he came, he came into line in 1923 with the World Zionist Organization. Um, and, and these are facts, you know, so, so these are things that people really overlook. And I think there are certain people in the world that want to cover over these truths because they, they, they want to try and make people think that your religion is your race or they want to try and make you think that your race is your color. So these people, first of all, are racists and second of all, they hold to one type of um, religion. And that's what you've got to realize about them. Um, now, me personally, I always bless the Jewish people. Um, I think what they, they went through not just the Ashkenazi Jews who are, who are assassinated, there's actually millions of Sephardic and other types and black and white and so on, people who were Christians even, who were, who were killed at the hands of the Nazis. So um, don't, don't think for a second that the Nazis just means nationalism. It's much, much, much more than that. They were occultists, they were idolaters, and uh, especially Hitler had had an inner group called the Thule Society, who used to um, practice seances, who used to practice, uh, I believe, orgies as well. But also they used to um, worship these extra, so-called extraterrestrial beings, demonic beings who led them into finding technology where they could build um, the Nazi bell. You know, you've heard of that. And these things are possibly time travel devices. You know, when you see the movie called Contact, which was, it's well over, I think, 20 odd years old by now, 20, 25 years old, the movie Contact. But I believe there was a device such as that on the earth. You know, I saw that in a vision a long time ago. Um, so there's many, even like Hellboy, if you've seen that one which is about the, the Nazis finding this technology where they're able to time travel, they're able to go through space gates. You know, you've, you've, you've seen uh, the, the, the one in Egypt, which is called Stargate. See, these are all things that even super soldiers uh, across the world say that they've been part of these um, psyops, not psyops, actual black ops, what they are, is black ops, what they call a hidden... Um, military organization to go ahead and fight um, so-called extraterrestrials. But this is exactly what President Trump was talking about, that, you know, I think it was about two months ago, he said that um, America is forming a, a space um, type of uh, defense, space defense against who? What, against meteors? He, he didn't specify who it was against. Um, you know, like a space army. So who is he fighting against? Like space aliens? Martians? He, he wasn't specific in, you know, who, who, who he was resisting. But um, obviously, those of us who have prayed for more than 10 minutes about the subject um, will get revelation and will see clearly that the Bible does talk about the fact that, yes, there are multi, probably millions of fallen angels whom they started off in Genesis 6, 200 of them fell and started copulating. Um, in other words, taking women as wives, probably raping them. So the, these angels were able to, um, where they landed, they were able to actually um, transform into the, the likeness of a male human being. And they're, they're actually able to take, so I think it was the Canaanite woman at that time. Now, I'm not sure if they were black or white. I think the Canaanites would have been, at that time, the races five and a half, five thousand years ago would have been different than what they are today. Because most of the world lived in the sort of Middle East area, North Africa, Africa, that type of area. And um, it wouldn't yet have like North and South America and probably most of Asia would have, would have been quite, quite empty for, for a time, at least until after the flood. And so you're talking about that most of these um, 
um, you know, um, continents were closer together um, as well. So you've got to realize that, you know, the world population during Noah's day could have been into the billions, could have been into the billions. But it says that these 200 fallen angels um, created these children that when they were born, they were giants. You know, their DNA, you know, their angelic DNA was mixed with the human DNA and they became something else. It says they were called great monsters, men of renown, like some of them looked like men. But they probably had like six, seven fingers, six, seven toes. They had probably physical aspects about them that were slightly different, slightly odd to what a, a male human being would be. But nevertheless, they, they looked human, so that's why they're called men of renown. But most of them actually went around in these called Nephilim, which are the hybrid. They were gangs, you know, and uh, they were wiped out at the flood. But what you've got to realize is that when the Israelites came into the Promised Land, they had to defeat, you know, the Reubenites, Manasseh, and Gad. They defeated um, the tribes in order to start inheriting the Jordan, inheriting the land. You know, uh, Judah and the other tribes failed to kill, you know, the rest of the, the tribes of the giants. And so they lived on until the Romans were very dominant in Europe until basically you know whenever an empire is dominant it wants to dominate absolutely every aspect of life even including extraterrestrial life so the romans even went after these nephilim tribes and they hid out in forests in europe and most of them were wiped out but what they did they took the champions of these tribes such as maximilian such as you know there's a whole list of them odin is another one uh, gog and magog and they actually come from the British Isles, which are two giants. If you, if you study it, um, you know, there's two statues of them in the Guild Hall in London. You know, that place was burnt down, but they actually built two more replicas again of these 15 foot giants. And so what you got to realize is that certain of the DNA of these Nephilim, half angel, half human, beings which were, which the bible refers to as nephilim or the fallen ones were intermingled with the upper echelons of european elites and that's why many of them um secretly secretly um claim lineage from certain gods quote unquote gods but they're actually fallen angels many of the names of these so-called gods are in the book of enoch um, but this is this is a thing that's done openly in India. You know, if you travel to India, um, these um, aspects are done openly. Children that are born with um, six, seven fingers, you know, that are taller, that look different, that have supernatural aspects about them. Some of them have a very high um, the sonic capability. In other words, that they have a high mental ability to move objects as we as we see in Star Wars and uh, these type of movies, which is a form of witchcraft, you know, that they, they, they have a telepathic ability in order to slightly read minds, but they can move objects as well, and they can cause all, they're, they're basically walking, talking um, weapons of warfare. That's what they are. And obviously the militaries of the world seen how the Nazis were using this technology, saw, saw uh, Hitler's program for super soldiers. You know, there's a lot of fronts, a lot of lies that Hitler told in order to protect what he was doing behind the scenes. But when the Allies came in, the Russians, the British and the Americans, they found, you know, all the experiments, you know, the space program took off in Russia and America. And, uh, they realized that there was a super soldier program going on um, with the Nazis that they were enhancing. For example, muscle density could be enhanced. You know, for example, like, uh, you know, the movie White Men Can't Jump, and you see, you know, maybe seven foot black men just sort of going up and putting, literally just placing basketballs in, into the basket. If you can imagine their muscle density is increased by three or four times, then what you could get is like a five, five and a half foot male 
but it's able to literally jump as high as the basket and literally dunk it in. I mean, if, if anyone saw that, that would be like supernatural. But in fact, super soldiers can do these things. And, you know, there's videos about that on YouTube as well. Um, that's just one as aspect of the super soldier program. You know, increasing muscle density. Again, you know, th they're able to enhance telepathic and mental abilities. And very recently, you know, we've watched a lot of videos on YouTube um, about the remote viewing as well. There's been a number of videos the past month, I would say, about remote viewing. And that's a very interesting aspect as well. But you've got to understand that when, when a person is born again, um, through the Holy Spirit, we can have access to all these things. Like supernaturally, God can touch us in order to that we can see what's happening in space. We can see what shape the earth is. Like, you know, I, I'm, I'm just amazed how quickly the flat earth is caught on. Um, you know, they sigh up the flat earth and that there's not even been any Christians who have actually been taken up and shown anything by the Lord or the Lord's taken them up and said, like, this is the earth, it's flat. There's not one, not one flat earther who's, who's seen a vision like that. So it's not, first of all, to, to form a doctrine you know, it's got to be, it's got to be revealed by the Lord first. And second of all, you've got to have two witnesses. So even if the Lord took one person up and showed them it was a flat earth, according to the word of God, you need two people to form. So, so it doesn't matter. You can say the earth is any shape you want. People just don't understand the, the rules of establishing um, doctrines, according to the word of God. And according to the word of God, that's not established. You know, you can say the earth is flat all you want until you're blue in the face, until you're six feet under. It doesn't matter. You know, you need to establish doctrine according to the word of God. And it, and it needs to be done in that way, in the proper manner. And the way it's done just now, there's not a single evidence that the earth is flat. And slightly more evidence that it's spherical. But even then, it's, it's not important. It's, it's not an important aspect. And I think that if you're putting flat earth first in your life, then subject to psychological warfare. And then you switch on David Icke who says that, how do we even know that we're, <laughs> that we're on the earth? And, and that guy takes psychological warfare to, um, to new levels of craziness when, 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 when you watch his videos. I mean, it's unbelievable, the stuff. I mean, you go from psyop to utter crazy, you know, when you watch David Icke videos. Anyhow. He seems like a nice guy, right? All the best to him. I think he's tried to, I think he's tried to expose a lot of wickedness that's going on in his own way. But is he preaching the gospel? No, he, he doesn't know Yeshua. He doesn't know the way to, to, to salvation. He just doesn't know it. Or if he does, um, he's decided to reject Yeshua. He's decided to reject the Son of God. So how can any Christian you know, listen to a man like that? Who, who goes around talking about these took, took drugs and he hears voices in a woman's voice in his head saying that everything is love and everything is vibration and we're all living in a you know some time and space isn't real you know the bible says that time and space is real you know it's not a hologram time and space is real something that god actually put into um motion in the six days of creation what to say man so I know I've, I've covered a lot of things in this video, spoke at length at certain things. Um, you know, we're in psychological warfare as we speak. Hate crime for X, Y, and Z. You know, whatever, whatever that's going to be. Um, most important thing is preach the gospel. Um, confess your sin to the Lord. Um, ask him to forgive you, ask him to deliver you from your sins, say the Lord's Prayer if you don't know how to pray and watch the Holy Spirit deliver you from any addictions you have, watch the Holy Spirit guide you into um, new pastors that you can serve the Lord because who knows how long we have I think um, the other day it's, 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 it's went from 2 minutes to midnight to 1 minute to midnight and so that's how close things are going to get until it's going to go completely crazy. 
<laughs> on the world. Some might call it the Great Tribulation, where we'll see these so-called space aliens, which who are actually fallen angels and Nephilim and hybrids and you name it. Yes, they might have bases on other planets. And the other thing is, you know, flat earthers really reject. Um, they say, well, we believe in demons, but not fallen angels and not aliens. Okay. So they don't believe, flat earthers don't believe that these beings can um, go through the dome. And yet there's eyewitness reports that these beings can walk through walls and they can um, abduct people from their own beds. They can literally abduct people physically from their own beds. Obviously, if they're not in, in the Lord's protection, these beings have a capacity, a supernatural power. It may be, or it might be some type of... Um, technology which just bends space and time you know physics because these beings have been been around for thousands of years and they are very very clever you know fallen angels have the mental capacity like far greater than a human being you got you got to understand that so when all this kicks off and then your governments tell you some type of another type of psyop um that they're space aliens you got to understand the Bible already identifies who they are. They are Satan's, they are devils. They are they are from the fallen angels. And their program is, um, if they can't make humanity destroy each other through racism and um, pitting one nation against another, one religion against another, if they can't make humanity destroy itself, then they will make humanity destroy itself through technology. And this is where the mark of the beast comes in. And this is what is described in the book of Revelation. Um, so that this is the type of warfare that we're facing truly, truly is not carnal. <clears throat> it's not flesh and blood we're really fighting here. It's a spiritual, psychological type of warfare that we are, we, we are facing here. And the more people that can understand that all the aspects I've spoken about have been spoken of by Yeshua, especially with the parable of the sower, and spend time praying about for understanding about that. Read the Bible, pray, accepting Yeshua, Jesus Christ, as, the, as, as your personal Lord and Savior is only the first step of salvation. Some of you, it might last a few years, and then the joy just leaves you, and you think, well, what is this? What is this I've been doing? You know? Um, and you've not spent enough time in prayer. You've not spent enough time allowing the Lord to establish doctrine, which he does through other believers. You know, when you're praying about when is the Sabbath, he will send someone to confirm when the Sabbath is. New moons and Sabbath days. If you ask him, am I part of one of the tribes of Israel? He'll give you confirmation. Whatever it is you pray and you're born again, he will confirm these things. But as long as you psychologically think that your salvation depends on just a single prayer, I believe you can lose your salvation because you're not applying yourself to walking, actually walking with the Lord. And, and through the Holy Spirit, you know, praying through us is going to lead us into all truth. And that is a fulfillment of what Yeshua said. But if you're not doing that, it means you're not walking with Yeshua. And all, all your doctrines... All of that stuff you think you're following is all um, what it describes in uh, the book of Ecclesiastics. You know, all is vanity. It's just vanity. That that's all you're following. Maybe a church building. Maybe you think that uh, you have to dress up to be a Christian. Maybe you think that uh, you do or don't have to eat pork, especially the ones that think they can. Where does it say that you can in the Word of God? And, and they keep quoting wrong verses. They keep quoting things that doesn't mean um, what the Bible actually teaches. The Bible has no contradiction. It's all about discernment. It's all about prayer. And most people who say that they pray don't know how to pray. And, and that's the truth. That's 100% truth. I've heard them. Prayer be defeated. I've not even heard anyone pray properly. And they think they're winning. They think they're hearing from God, and they're not. They're not hearing from God. I don't know what to say. Anyway, anybody book uh, ID painted? Give me a shout.
I'll send the painting out to you for a small fee. God bless you.